Okay, global warming. Well, people have said that the whole global warming scam is about carbon taxation and all that stuff. If only. This is far more significant than even most conspiracy researchers um, that look at the global warming are kind of realizing. This is a justification of the most extraordinary transformation of human society from uh, any vestige of freedom to pure, undiluted, totalitarian fascism. This is why, no matter what the scientific evidence, they will not um, look at it. They are pushing on with this agenda no matter what comes out because it is vital. It is vital to the everything in so many ways that they're trying to create, and I'm going to explain why. This is uh, Al Gore. One of the things I've learned over this quarter of a century, if Al Gore's involved, it's a scam. End of story, by the way. Um, anyone who is vice president to Bill Clinton, well, say no bloody more. Um, and it's eco-fascism because they need you to believe in global warming in order to control you. That's absolutely right for this reason that I'm going to explain. Um, we had the uh, Earth concerts, usual bloody suspects pushing it, and this uh, global warming survival reptilian brain handbook was written for the Earth concerts by David de Rothschild. Oh, he cares about the world. He's lovely. Um, uh, and uh, this is a graph of greenhouse gases. If you, leave, if you believe the bollocks and the propaganda, this has to be carbon dioxide. Has to be. But it's not. It's water vapor and clouds. This is CO2, and only the little sliver of green is caused by humans, the rest is natural. And by the way, without carbon dioxide, we wouldn't have the world that we live in. Yet, let's, let's take some of what we need and demonize it. Yes, that's a good archontic inversion, isn't it? Yes, that's right. It's just come out in 2012 that from the end of the warming period, 1997 to 2012, there's been no warming, basically. So that's why they're calling it climate change. They can't call it global warming because people say, well, it ain't warming, mate. Uh, this is, um, this is uh, research by uh, physicists at uh, CERN in, um, in Geneva, which were, you know, was banned for a while, but then it got out in the media and, and, and they released it. And this is um, the findings are, that have shown that the, there is a near-perfect correlation between climate change, global warming, and the penetration of cosmic rays into the Earth's atmosphere throughout history. You don't mean that warming could have something to do with the sun, could you? Notice the sun never gets a mention. Well, forget about the sun. No, it's carbon dioxide. Bloody ridiculous. There you go. What they've done is they took one cycle of solar activity, locked into it, called it global warming catastrophe, and have just, you know, refused to or go back on it. This is a guy who was one of the global warmists in the global warmist cult. He's had the guts to come out and speak the truth. A guy called David Evans, uh, full time and part time consultant for 11 years to the Australian Greenhouse Office, now the Department of uh, Climate Change. Um, he said the debate about global warming had reached crazy proportions. Uh, I am a scientist who was uh, on the carbon gravy train, understands the evidence, was once an alarmist, but am now a skeptic. He said the whole idea that carbon dioxide is the main cause of the recent warming was based on a guess that was proved false by empirical evidence during the 1990s, but the gravy train was too big with too many jobs, industries, trading profits, political careers, and here we go and the possibility of world government and total control riding on the outcome. Evans said that the governments and their tame climate scientists now outrageously maintain the fiction that carbon dioxide is a dangerous pollutant rather than admit they are wrong even when the evidence is overwhelming. They can't admit they're wrong. They can't admit they're wrong for reasons I'm coming to because their whole house of cards will come down. That is how important this is. Uh, and then I read a Reuters report, um, missing global heat may hide in deep oceans. It's hiding now. 
The mystery of Earth's missing heat may have been solved. It could lurk deep in oceans, temporarily masking the climate warming effects of greenhouse gas emissions, researchers reported on Sunday. Whoa! Climate scientists have long wondered where this so-called missing heat was going. How about it wasn't bloody there? Especially over the last decade when greenhouse emissions kept increasing but world air temperatures did not rise correspondingly. It's hiding now. He's going looking for it, look. He's looking for the warming. Quick, 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 someone's coming. Act as if you're cold. Brr, brr. Oh no, no, it's cold there. There's no warming hiding. Now, Club of Rome mentioned it earlier. This was specifically set up to use the environment, and there are environmental concerns we should be dealing with, but they're being put aside for this bloody global warming bloody nonsense, uh, uh, to use the environment to justify this transformation of society I'm talking about. This is uh, Aurelio Pecci, one of the founders of the Club of Rome, quoted in the first Global Revolution, 1991, a publication of the group. In searching for a new enemy to unite us, we came up with the idea that pollution, the threat of global warming, water shortages, famine and the like would fit the bill. And so we have these outrageous um, uh, films with children blowing up because they don't uh, agree with global warming. What a bloody outrage. Uh, and then we had this, I love this, we had this big alarmist thing came out recently. Oh, look at Greenland, it's the biggest uh, surface melt, it's unprecedented in Greenland. Same press release. Melting events of this type occur about once every 150 years on average, with the last one happening in 1890-89. What happened to unprecedented? And by the way, what happened to the one before that one? What caused it? Turbocharged hand carts? And and then NASA came out later and said actually there was a massive cyclone that was responsible for most of it. And then you look at the other end, the Antarctic, and it's record um, ice cover in 2012. And yet we've got the cult and he's in the carbon credits and bloody gravy train. This is Lady, uh, uh, the uh, Prime Minister of, uh, of Australia, Julia Gillard. She said, oh no carbon tax under my government came in carbon tax and it's devastating the Australian bloody economy. And I'd say to, to, to Greens, and I'd say to environmentalists, get your bloody arse in gear and realise what's real and what is manipulated. Because at the moment, ladies and gentlemen, you uh, who have bought this bloody thing, you are demanding the building of your own prison. Now that's fine, but you're demanding the building of mine and my children's as well. on the basis of a bloody blatant lie. Here you go, S follow the Bono. That's a great thing, they say follow the money. I say follow the Bono, he's his mate, his few others look, you know, follow the Bono, they're all there. Now, there was a, 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 a film came out uh, earlier this year called Hunger Games. And uh, this encapsulated in so many ways the society where the global warming bollocks is supposed to take us uh, through justification. Of course, um, if you look at the, uh, the symbol of the film, it's the phoenix, the, the, uh, the firebird. For those who haven't seen it, it was a world sometime in the future of enormous, to well, total control, where um, different sectors were fenced off and, and people were not allowed to go in most of the land of the country. And they were controlled from something called the Capitol, which was an elite uh, that was served by all the the, the poor people and uh, hungry people around the country. Uh, and um, they had a games every year where two young people were, were picked from each sector who had to fight on live television. Uh, and the one who won was the one that stayed alive after all the others were killed. The idea was to kill all the others and, and win the game. Uh, as Dr. Richard Day said in 1969, Violence, pornography and obscenity in the media and movies will be increased to desensitize people to violence and porn and make them feel life is short, precarious and brutish. And The Hunger Games was a classic, but it was more than that. Um, it was a, a symbol of the society that we're heading towards so fast. This was one of the, the elite in the capital. The, the equivalent of what people call the 1%, although, as, as I say, the real control is in far fewer than that. Um, and we have a version of the Hunger Games, 
and it's called Agenda 21 Sustainable Development and it is being orchestrated outside uh, or through the United Nations and it is a stalking horse, a Trojan horse for world fascism, as I'm going to uh, go through and explain. Um, Agenda 21 was agreed at the 1992 Earth Summit in Brazil, which was headed by this guy, Maurice Strong, one of the gang big time, uh, a mate of Al Gore, and he said, Maurice Strong, this billionaire oil man, etc., he said, isn't the only hope for the planet that the industrialized civilizations collapse? Isn't it our responsibility to bring this about? What they are trying to do and planning to do is use saving the environment, which these buggers are destroying, um, to justify deindustrialization and uh, the end of democracy and democratic, uh, uh, you know, which is another thing I could talk about. Democ democracy and freedom, interchangeable? Don't think so. Anyway, this is the wish list in documents for Agenda 21 operating through the United Nations. An end to national sovereignty, all justified by saving the world, by the way. Uh, an end to national sovereignty. State planning and management of all land resources, ecosystems, deserts, forests, mountains, oceans, and fresh water. Agriculture, rural development, biotechnology, and ensuring equity equals slavery. The state is to define the role of business and financial resources. Ab abolition of private property is not sustainable, they say. Here we go again. How many times has this come up? Restructuring the family unit, children to be raised by the state, people told, this is what Aldous Huxley said in Brave New World, people told what their job will be, major restrictions on movement, creation of human settlement zones, I'll get to them in a minute, mass resettlement as people are forced to vacate land where they live for reasons I'm coming to, dumbing down education achieved a long time ago, mass global depopulation in pursuit of all of the above.